I've got four chords for you in this lesson and by the end of this you're going to be able to play all kinds of things over it. So we got A minor, D minor, F and G. I've got my keyboard here ready to go with the backing track. And we're just going to layer things up as we go. So A minor, D minor, F and G, they're all in the same key and we'll get onto that afterwards because that's going to inform our decisions, our note choices. But let's start simple. We need to take a listen to the kick drum. That's the first thing I want you to try. I didn't actually play all of them. I just chose this rhythm and kept the third note long and just went with the roots. That's all. Let's do a similar thing, but this time we'll add some thirds and fifths. And this is where we start to get into the territory of music theory, which isn't scary at all. It's just something as a bass player you need to know. So the first chord, A minor. The C is the minor third. I know it as a C, I know it also as a pattern. Two frets that way, one string that way, or here, on the same string, there's my fifth. And you need to know that on every chord, so D minor same. F, that's just an F triad. G triad. Let's do the same thing now, so I'm going to stick to root notes and add in the occasional third depending on whether it's major or minor. Notice how those simple notes just add a little layer of complexity over just the root note. There's nothing wrong, by the way, with doing just a root note bass line. It's often the best. Often the best bass lines are the simplest. Okay, let's move up one more level. Let's do the similar thing. Let's add some sevenths in. So we've had thirds and fifths so far. And there's a seventh on the A minor. On the D minor, same thing. It's D minor seven arpeggio. In this key, which again is A minor, the F chord has an E as a major seventh. And the G is a G dominant seventh. I may not add all of those in, but let's have a listen. There. It's a nice little hook there. So that's on the A minor. A little slide to the fifth. And I'm just describing what I'm doing in the moment. You know, you do what you like. I'm going to that flat seven and I know where it is. It's all patterns. And the D minor is the same quality of chord as an A minor, so I can literally take the same thing I played. Go down to the F here. It's a bit of major seven stuff. But on the G, I, I want to keep things simple. I'm zipping through this quite fast, but I could do hours and hours just on this one bass line, but I'm hoping to just give you a few ideas. So the next one is to connect up the lines a little bit more. Let's do that using the scale. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. That's A natural minor. Okay, I was definitely getting too busy there, but anything I was doing there that was tuneful or melodic were just notes from that key. This is why you need to know the key. Uh, certainly if you know the key, then when you work out a bass line, it's easier as well to work out the bass line. But when you're making bass lines up, it's essential. A, 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 B, C, D. I'm just walking up to the D, the root of the D minor. Let's walk up D, D, E, F. And 
let's maybe keep the contour of the line going there. Or you could go F. Descend. I'm just using notes of the scale. If you want to get really fancy, you could learn your modes. And a mode is just almost like a scale within a scale. So A, natural minor, is itself a mode. Okay, it's called Aeolian. And over the D, over the four chord, which is the D minor, you'd play Dorian, would fit. I, I don't mean you would play it. They're there as note choices for you, okay? You can choose not to use them, you can choose to use them. So we can think of them as modes or we can think of them just as, well, this is just the A minor scale. Notes are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Starting from whatever note we're on. So F, we'd go F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. You do not need to know that it's called the Lydian, but it is. I know it's called that. It doesn't make me a better player because I know it. It just means that I have those notes there. I could, eat, I could also not know what it's called and it doesn't matter. So G, let's do a bit more of that. It's a bit blatant with that at the end. It's descended the G mix Lydian. Now I'm going to leave that explanation there because really when I'm playing I'm, I'm not thinking any of that. Okay, Analyzing it, that's what's happening. But you don't need to really know what those modes are. Just know that the notes of the scale, you know. Just know them in a few patterns, know where the target root note is. And if you want to inject a bit more of a melody into your bass line, those are the notes you can use. Let's talk about parts. Last couple of examples, I've been playing too much. I want to go back to sticking to a bass line, but instead of or just, a, just the kick drum, but instead of using just roots, I might use a couple of other notes and come up with a, a bit more of a part, a bit more of a hook. Okay, I, I did a fill there as well, but I was latching on to that, which I love to do. It's a root and a fifth. So on the first chord, the A minor, I'm going A to E and a little jump across to the ninth, which is the next note after the octave. Again, I'm not thinking any of this. Everything I'm talking to you about now, if I was doing a session, I would my mind would not be going to the words I'm using. It's a language. I've kind of like absorbed all this stuff and it's just coming out, okay? That's what I want for you as well, to learn the elements there. And I was doing something like that, you know. There's the little hook with the ninth line. And little connecting things with a bit more rhythm in there. Using my secret weapon, not mine, but the bass player's secret weapon of the minor pentatonic scale. Learn that one. It's brilliant for fills. We'll get into that a bit more in a minute. But let's stick with this idea. D now, D minor. Connect to the F. And let's do the same pattern because it works on any one of these chords. That root five, nine idea. I'm sliding to it and then returning to the octave. Slowly. So there's a bit of a hand shift, quite a dramatic hand shift there. Let's run with that kind of idea. Okay, at the end, that was a minor pentatonic thing as a fill. But did you hear what I did there? Just roots with a little. What's that? Okay, it's it's Le Freak, isn't it? Channeling the spirit of Bernard Edwards playing this uh, Stingray, 78 Stingray. 
Which I suppose is a point because the more you study bass players that you like, you can borrow their ideas and, and kind of absorb it into your own voice. And I absolutely am obsessed with Bernard Edwards. I think he's one of the best pop bass players of all time. I mean, pop, funk, bit of rock as well. But in terms of like hooks, just unbeatable. So you listen to who you like, but when you do that, you'll find yourself playing in, in that kind of way. So throughout this lesson, we've actually been talking about the three main elements of, of music, really. Rhythm, harmony, melody. Rhythm is obvious as a bass player, we're in the rhythm section. There's a rhythm. Sticking to it. But we have access to scales on a bass, unlike a drummer, so we can add melody in. So all of those little fancy notes, just notes from a scale. And if I want the bass line to be more melodic, I'll borrow those a bit more. And harmony is the study of chords. And as bass players, yes, we can stick to roots, but if we can outline the notes of the harmony, the thirds and the sevenths, then we have a big job to play within a band to outline that. So we've got harmony, rhythm, melody, and we as bass players, we're the bridge between all the instruments. That's a really powerful place to be. So you can download that backing track, follow the link below, and just, you might need to go through the video again, but just go through it slowly and, you know, start simple, build the ideas only when you're ready to go to the next point and see where you get to. I did a video very similar to this. It's my second most popular video ever on YouTube. So if you haven't watched that, I'm gonna leave a link right here. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you on the next video.